congratulations on this documentary and also congratulations on it being screened as part of the Transitions Film Festival. Thank you so much. We're excited to be included and, you know, do the festival tour even in these uh, lonely pandemic times. I guess that's a great way to start off the interview. How difficult is it for a filmmaker at the moment to to get their films out there during this lockdown? I mean, we thought our cinemas were back open and everything was fine, and then all of a sudden we got put into a snap five-day lockdown again. So how difficult is it for a filmmaker to get their work out there at the moment? You know, I can't speak for every filmmaker, but I can say with my experience with Barefoot, you know, we were so fortunate that we got to have our film festival premiere before COVID-19 hit. So we had our world premiere at a festival called the Heartland International Film Festival, and that was in October 2019. And, you know, we had cast and crew there, and we won the Best Premiere Award. And um, after that, we had a few more screenings in different cities in the U.S. and um, also had our like hometown premiere with all of our sort of like crew and family members come out and pack the theater. And then, you know, we were really amping up for, uh, you know, I guess spring and summer 2020 when, when COVID really hit the U.S. And I was actually in the middle of the festival tour. You know, I had everything booked and paid for to go to uh, California and D.C. And um, everything kind of got shut down and I had to rush home in the middle of the film festival tour. So uh, it was a real adjustment. And, it, you know, being an independent filmmaker that was definitely difficult you know mentally and emotionally to have to readjust to like not uh have the in-person reception of the film at the level that we had hoped but you know i had friends who were about to have their world premiere and that was down for them so i think you know it it was difficult um but obviously there are bigger fish to fry when it comes to uh, priorities in a pandemic. And, you know, when people are losing their lives, you really can't cry too many tears about your film's festival tour. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we complain here about going into lockdown, but realistically, we've got 23 cases of COVID in the entire country of Australia at the moment. So, it yeah, we've got nothing to complain about at all compared to what is going on in the rest of the world. And I guess that leads to my next question. Um, What is it like for you there at the moment? Is it starting to open back up or is it still looking really, really bad? Uh, It's an interesting question. I, I have friends who are essential workers who are out there working every day. Um, you know, me and my partner, uh, we haven't seen anyone else uh, for like a year now. Yeah. It's just he and I living together and, you know, we haven't seen our parents. We haven't seen friends. Um, we're pretty strict about uh, seeing others because the cases, I mean, for, for a long time recently, they, there were like, gosh, was it something like 4,000 deaths a day? Yeah. Uh, and so... It's it's really extreme, and, you know, I have acquaintances and friends who will post on Facebook and say, you know, I just tested positive for COVID, and, you know, I have a friend who's uh, a police officer who tested positive a few weeks ago, and you know, stuff like that, um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I admire what you all are doing in Australia, and I really wish that the U.S. could have been on the right uh, page with all of this and could have had better leadership. Uh, obviously our film, you know, is very critical of Donald Trump, uh, for his environmental policies. Uh, we made the film before COVID and, um, that's just like probably the biggest disaster of his presidency, his handling of that. And there's a lot of data on how many lives could have been saved if not for his mishandling and, you know, claiming that it's just a flu and it's not all that contagious and keep hanging out and not wearing a mask. And all of the misinformation and lies were really overwhelming here. So, you know, we would like walk by bars that were just packed full of people without masks. And me and my boyfriend are saying like, I can't believe, you know, people are just living in different, uh, different worlds mentally. 
uh, there's just a lot of division here still. Yeah, yeah. And it's the same here as well. Like, we pretty much have a prime minister here who wiped his hands of the whole COVID thing and just left it to the the state premiers. And it was up to every state to to kind of make up their own rules and what they were doing. Luckily, our premier decided to lock us down for eight months and it seemed to work. But yeah, there's such a great divide there at the moment, even in Australia. It, it does feel like we're not a united country anymore that it is state versus state so yeah it's a it's a really weird feeling but i guess bringing it back to the to the documentary you make such fascinating documentaries and you introduce us to such fascinating people how did you first hear about mark and what made you decide to want to make a documentary about him yeah so uh i guess it was in 2016 I was kind of coming off of the festival tour with my documentary Woman on Fire, which was about the first openly transgender firefighter in New York City, a very inspiring role model for the LGBTQ community. So I was wrapping up that film and what I'm going to do next. And I had a feeling I wanted to do something regarding climate change just because it was like weighing down on me. Everything I was hearing is like, this is what we need to be consumed by and fighting against and if we don't there won't be a planet anymore so um then i saw you know i was like wondering what little thing can i do with my limited skills of filmmaking um and then i saw mark bomber's videos a friend of mine was always posting his his videos as he was out there walking across america barefoot to protest climate change and um, he was just really funny and charismatic in this way that reminded me of Andy Kaufman, the great comedian and absurdist. And I loved the way that Mark Bomber brought, you know, this just kind of witty sense of humor and childlike wonder to the issue of climate change. And, um, you know, so I just kind of became a fan instantly and wanted to maybe collaborate with him someday. But I didn't want to bother him while he was on the walk. And so I just kind of like didn't reach out. And then it was uh, the day after Trump's inauguration. And I watched one of Mark's videos that was like very, you know, impassioned, giving this diatribe against Trump and, and who we were bringing into power. And then I went on Facebook and I, I saw, you know, these posts of we'll, we'll miss you forever, Mark. And I'm like, what, what does that mean? And, and I kept reading further and I learned that Mark had been killed on his walk the day after Donald Trump was inaugurated. So I was devastated even just as a fan and um, was just crying all day and saying, I didn't even know this guy. You know, I was just someone watching his videos and these videos that he made really have to be preserved. People have to know his story because he really, you know, took the, the issue of environmentalism very personally and he made you feel the urgency of it. It was very contagious. Um, and so I, I reached out to the mutual friend that I had in common with him and she connected me with his parents and they allowed me to tell his you know life story through this film. How did they first take it when you approached them? Because that would have been such a, an awkward situation, even for yourself. Like if you know somebody who's lost a relative it's hard enough sometimes to talk to them what were they like when you first approached them about making the documentary about mark's life yeah i i was really hesitant to reach out and i waited for a few weeks and then i started to see uh news article after news article about mark's death and his parents were being interviewed a lot the story had gone viral and at that point, I said, okay, they're speaking to the press and it's appropriate for me to reach out. And uh, I wanted that personal connection, you know, by going through the mutual friend that I had in common with Mark, just so that she could kind of vouch for me, let them know that, you know, I was a fan of his before he passed. And, you know, through just kind of sending this long email to them and expressing my intentions uh, to pay tribute to Mark's life. They responded well. We had many phone conversations. Uh, they were, you know, in a state of shock and grief, losing their only son um, and someone they were really close to. You know, they really 
had so much in common with and had a, a very deep and special bond. And um, so it was all very, it had to be handled very sensitively. And, you know, I definitely felt like I was being, you know, like interviewed in a sense for how appropriate I was for this role of telling the story, which was uh, totally understandable. And then I flew over in March, which is a few months after Mark died in 2017 and um, just brought out um, the cinematographer I work with, John Pope, and we hired like a local PA in Maine. If I, I live in Pittsburgh and we flew to Maine and met with Mark's parents. And I actually stayed at their house for like a day or two and we had dinners together. And, and you know, because for me, it's always been about those human relationships and building relationships and not just like we're coming in to make a movie and then, yeah. peace, you know, see you later. Uh, I, I, especially with a feature like film, when you're spending, you know, years with people, you really do become friends and it takes so much trust building to do it. So, uh, you know, I think it just worked out the first shoot that we had, we really got along well and, and went from there and it was very organic. Did you feel more pressure in making this film because it would end up being a legacy to Mark's message and also his life as well. Did you feel a, an added pressure to, to get this right kind of thing? A ton of pressure. Absolutely. Yeah. And like all of my films before this, uh, were about living subjects who I could go and talk to and interview. And, uh, it was, lonely as well not being able to talk to mark and almost becoming friends with him as i'm like you know directing this and editing it but i can't talk to this person who i'm learning so much about and i have questions for him and i can't get them answered um but yeah there's that question of just like you know is this a fair portrait of this person and wanting it to be not too lionizing uh so that's challenging um but I think it was a lot of responsibility. And at the end of the day, like I wanted his family to like it. I wanted his friend like it and to feel that it's an accurate representation of the person that they knew. And, and, um, you know, but also to just like make a good film for strangers to watch. You didn't know Mark. And so it, it was more pressure than I'm used to. Yeah. Well, Julie, you have made an absolutely amazing documentary. And I guess to finish up, is there anything that you would like to say to our listeners out there before they head at, head out and, and see Barefoot at the Transitions Film Festival? Well, I thank everyone in, van- in advance for watching the film online and, you know, feel free to reach out to us on like Twitter and Facebook. And we really love to connect with people who watch the film and thank you for having me on not a problem thank you so much julie it's been absolutely amazing to talk to you and uh hopefully we get to see you in australia one day with one of your amazing documentaries oh thanks i'd love that awesome i'll let you go have a great night and hopefully we talk again soon bye thank you see you bye